Mission top secret, destination unknown. Don't even know if we're ever coming home. As a free concert by Rage Against the Machine came to an end Wednesday afternoon, thousands of anti-war protesters poured into the streets outside of the Denver Coliseum. The march, organized by Iraq Vets Against the War, was the largest demonstration of the convention. Um, my name is Maggie Martin. I am the chapter president of the new Savannah, Georgia chapter of IVAW. We're marching to, uh, to show the Democrats and to show America that um, veterans who are over there who served um, are against the war and that we're not going uh, to let the Democrats uh, get off scot-free on, on running on an anti-war uh, platform and getting elected and, and not following through, so we're here to hold them accountable. You know, we voted them in in 2006 on the idea that they'd give us these false promises, these, uh, these hopes that uh, they were going to bring us out of Iraq, and they've only funded it time and time again, and uh, they've only stalled better legislation that would help us get, get health care. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to vote on hope, you know, I'm going to vote on solutions. And, uh, you know, both parties, it's both parties' fault we got into this war. It's both parties' fault that we're still there. So we need to hold them both, both accountable. And uh, we're going to march there and we're going to demand they hear what we have to say. And if they're really the anti-war uh, party, as some might think, then they should have no problem endorsing what we have to say. We've been to Iraq. We've seen the brutality and uh, the oppression that we've put upon the Iraqi people. We know that they see us as occupiers and invaders and not as peacekeepers. And uh, we need to bring the troops home now, and that's the only way to, to find a peaceful solution to this entire conflict. In front of me is uh, about 60 Iraq veterans against the war from different branches of the military in dress A uniforms and combat camo uniforms marching in tight formation. Behind me is the entire Rage Against the Machine show that just took place for free in Denver. And they're marching behind us. And we're going to go as far as we can to the convention center. The vets are willing to go to jail and a lot of the crowd is too. So we're going to fill the jails, fill the streets and get our message across. Protesters marched over four miles in the hot afternoon sun, past the hotels where delegates are staying, and up to the gates of the Pepsi Center, where the convention is being held. The veterans carried a letter with them they planned to read to the convention. Senator Obama, in your campaign for the pre presidency of the United States of America, you have clearly presented yourself as the anti-war candidate, dedicated to change in trying times. Senator Obama, millions of Americans are looking to you to restore our country's good name and reputation around the world, beginning with righting the wrongs of the war-driven Bush administration. Iraq Veterans Against the War is the only organization consisting of active duty service members and veterans of the global war on terror committed to ending the occupation of Iraq. We believe that a responsible withdrawal of U.S. forces from Iraq should include, number one, the immediate withdrawal of all occupying forces from Iraq, two, full and adequate health care and benefits to all returning service members and veterans, and three, reparations made to the Iraqi people for the destruction caused by the U.S. war and occupation. If you don't get in and this all ends peacefully, will you have at least achieved part of your goal? Well, I mean, my goal right now is, I mean, I'm a Marine. I don't, I get to, you know, my mission is to stand there and tell those people that because, yeah, you can put, you know, you can put one of us in a closet somewhere and, and you know, say, whisper it in his ear. We want people to know that there are people who have served in the global war on terror who are deeply offended by what's being done in our name. Why do you think they won't talk to you? Well, I just, I, actually, I think it's a communication thing. If we could get them to come out here, I believe they would be fine with having us read that letter. You know, I, they'd be just fine. If somebody can get the word in there, I'm sure there are a lot of good Americans in there that would be not okay with the idea that they're about to arrest a bunch of Iraq vets if we don't go home. This is my home. This is my home. Hundreds of heavily armed police officers in body armor massed at the gates to stop the march. The police of the city of Denver have given the dispersal order to the protesters in the rear of the formation. We're told that if that order is given three times, they have authorization to shoot tear gas into the crowd. And Iraq veterans against the war will be standing here in formation, awaiting further response from the campaign of Senator Barack Obama. These veterans fought too hard to come back here and be ignored, as we have been for the last seven years by this same administration, 
to be ignored again by the would-be savior of America, his anti-war rhetoric, to be ignored again is a disgrace. The police brought in reinforcements and the veterans braced themselves for an attack. Ron Kovic, I'm a Vietnam veteran. I uh, was wounded in Vietnam on January 20th, 1968 with the United States Marine Corps. We've marched a long ways. They've been marching ever since they came home from the war. All they want to do is be listened to. That's all they're asking for. Have they not sacrificed enough in order to be listened to? How much more do these young men and women have to sacrifice before this country begins to listen to them? Why are they abandoning these young men and women? They have every right to be heard. And I don't know, I don't understand why the Democratic Party is turning their back on their own veterans, their own soldiers. Why is the Democratic Party not listening to these young men and women? Why? They serve their country, they, they serve their country honorably, they're peaceful, they're nonviolent. Why is the Democratic Party not listening? Where are the representatives of this party? Where are the representatives? Where are the delegates? That's what we're asking tonight. That's what we're asking tonight. We want an end to this war. We want to be heard. We want to be listened to. We're tired of being, being told to shut up. We're tired of being told that we've got to go inside of a cage. Do you know how insulting, how humiliating that is? That we have to go inside of a cage? Can you imagine? Can, think about this. Wake up for a second. Think about these young men and women. These young men and women, uh, they, are the, they are the very best. They are the finest. They're not going to go inside of a cage. You're not going to cage democracy. You're not going to cage freedom of speech. You're not going to invade our privacy. You're not going to wiretap us. We're getting sick and tired. Uh, we're getting sick and tired of people telling us that we've got to remain silent. We're, we're not going to be silent anymore. We're not going to be silent. We're going to speak our minds and we're going to be heard. But as the tension rose, a surprise message arrived from the Obama campaign. We got through to the campaign staff and they've agreed. The, the veterans liaison is coming out to set up a meeting to talk about when we can read our letter to the delegates, so we succeeded. As a veteran, you're used to kind of being pushed off to the side. When you come home, most people don't want to listen. And now that we have the ear of a presidential candidate as Iraq veterans, I can't tell you how good that feels. Most, most of the time, they, they want us to come home and be war heroes and take our medals and, and, and forget about the war. Well, we can't forget about the war. We won't forget about the war, and we certainly won't forget about our brothers and sisters still fighting it and the Iraqi people who are stuck there. I would say that this is a victory. When you work in the anti-war movement, you take victories when they come to you. This is a victory where at least have the ear of a presidential candidate. That's, uh, I think, the first for the anti-war movement for the Iraq war to actually have the full ear of one of the presidential candidates. And we will continue to keep the pressure up. This isn't the end for us until there is immediate withdrawal of all occupying forces. All veterans are taken care of and reparations are paid to the Iraqi people. Iraq veterans against the war isn't gonna rest. We're packing up in a, in a matter of hours and we're headed to the Republican National Convention and we're gonna pressure them the same way that we pressured here, uh, especially highlighting McCain's atrocious record on veterans issues. The Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America recently rated McCain as a D minus voting on veterans issues. Protesters were elated by the victory, but after meeting with Obama's veterans liaison, Philip Carter, the initial promise of a time to address the convention was changed. Did they say they were going to present this letter to Barack Obama? Um, you know what, they said they've received it, and if, if the campaign staff doesn't uh, have enough common sense to let the senator make a decision about this, and I, I, I hope they don't win the presidency. <laughs> what did they say would be the next step? Uh, we were pushing for them to uh, get back to us in, in a deadline, and they were not, uh, you know, they said, well, all I can say is that we will get back to you, and not in a certain time frame. And uh, so once again, we reiterated, you know, we have three things to tell people, that you said no, that you didn't get back to us, or we're reading it tomorrow in front of the delegates of the Democratic National Convention. Do you think you might possibly be doing that? Well, I never imagined to be behind that police line, so I'm not going to limit my imagination now. The veterans remain hopeful that the Obama campaign will give them a place and a voice inside of the convention. But they are determined to keep up the pressure for an immediate withdrawal, full benefits for all veterans, and reparations for the Iraqi people, regardless of who wins in November. For Democracy Now!, this is Rick Rowley, with Hani Masood and Nicole Salazar.